you. Assalamu alaikum. I'm delighted to be here with uh, my parliamentary colleagues and have the chance to speak at this seminar on this very, very important uh, subject. And I also want to welcome the initiative of the Islamic Foundation in convening this uh, event and, and make the point that, that the Foundation does, I think, very effectively promote uh, greater mutual understanding between Muslims and uh, other faiths and also sets rigorous standards in its academic uh, research. Dr. Asa and I were together at a, a government meeting yesterday. I, I pay tribute to his work and the work of the staff uh, of the Foundation for all that they do. And I also want to express thanks to the other uh, organisations co-hosting uh, this event. We thank Development Bank, the Markfield Institute of, of Higher Education and, as well. Uh, alongside being a minister in the, the Treasury, uh, the Prime Minister has appointed me uh, a government advisor on faith. And people sometimes say you ought not to mix up faith and politics. And if you do, then you're asking for trouble. But actually, I, I take the opposite view to that. I think that faith is a great starting point for politics and that we need more people taking up politics from the starting point of faith. Because Faith is the source of decent values, of honesty, responsibility, commitment to family, generosity, solidarity, support for peace, anger at injustice and at poverty. Decent values which the Muslim community shows in abundance. And those are exactly the values that we need in our politics. And we need them in our financial services market as well. For a very long time, indeed, centuries now, London has been a, a centre of global trade and has thrived on the ideas and influences that arrived here from around the world. London has become preeminent amongst world cities by always being open, open to people, open to businesses, open to ideas. Uh, I don't think anywhere can challenge London today for the title of world's most international city. Uh, over 200 languages spoken, people of 150 nationalities, 70 faiths calling London home. And when I say home, I don't just mean that London provides a place for them to stay. What I mean is that for people with roots in every part of the world, London provides opportunity, security, friendship, in a way that only a real home can. New York, by contrast, bases its success on a huge domestic economy. London can't do that, so London relies and has always relied on its position as a gateway to the world. And what we're saying today is societies and economies everywhere becoming increasingly interconnected, and it's the openness of London that has helped it become the world's most important financial centre. That's a position that the government wants to maintain. And we recognise that Islamic finance can play a very important part. London is already uh, Europe's leading destination for foreign direct investment. Last year, we attracted a trillion dollars worth of foreign direct investment, uh, and that was the first time we achieved such a large quantity, second only to the United States amongst all the countries in the world. And the UK financial sector generated over a tenth of UK GDP last year, supported over uh, a million jobs. And the openness of London to new influences and new ideas and its connections uh, around the world have given it, I think, a head start in Islamic Finance. We are already uh, here, the Western world's major center for Islamic finance. 18 Sukuk have been listed here, worth an estimated $13 billion uh, between them, including earlier this year the first sovereign Sukuk to be listed on the London Stock Exchange from the Kingdom of Bahrain. There are five dedicated Islamic banks in the UK. I opened the Whitechapel branch, one of them just over the road. Uh, a few years uh, ago, uh, one Islamic insurance provider, 
and we see there greater examples of something that I think it's very important that we see more of in Britain in the future, and that is distinctive institutions which are both clearly Muslim and clearly British, 100% faithfully Muslim, 100% authentically British, both at the same time with no hint of a conflict. The Islamic Foundation I see as a good example of that kind of institution because from institutions of that kind, we can see Muslims contributing more and more to British life and to our aims of a strong economy and a strong society, both of those things at the same time for the benefit of everybody in Britain and Muslims making a great contribution. We also have over 20 conventional banks in the UK that offer Islamic financial services. In total, there are more banks in Britain offering Islamic finance than in the whole of Western Europe, the rest of Western Europe, put together. Um, according to rating agencies, Islamic banking assets grew at a rate of just under 20% every year between uh, 2000 and 2007. They're estimated currently to be worth up to $700 billion uh, worldwide. And it clearly uh, presents, the market presents huge long-term opportunities for London and for the UK. And that's why the UK government is working with the authorities and with industry to establish the city firmly as a global gateway to Islamic finance. And the reason why Gordon Brown, as Chancellor of the Exchequer, uh, three years ago now, I think, set the goal that London should be the leading centre worldwide for Islamic finance. Of course, in setting that goal, we recognise we're up against a pretty stiff, stiff composition from other centres around the world. But we think that's the right uh, goal to pursue, recognising the importance of this market and the opportunity that it opens up.